All right, guys, welcome back to the shop. Today I'm working on my little uh, portable hydraulic unit. So um, I built this thing a few years ago. I never actually quite finished it. As you can see, there's a vice grip, hold, vice grip holding the mo motor on. But uh, this is like just a little low displacement hydraulic pump with a rubber coupler over to a little electric motor. And then I've got a dump truck valve body and uh, tank here. So you just have basically um, filter on the low pressure side, fluids coming in, getting pumped through the pump up to the valve body here. And then I have two work hoses. They're just linked together to keep dirt out of them, but you would connect those to like each port of a dual acting cylinder. So this thing was having pumps or problems with the valve. Thought it was related to the pressure relief. Um, change that out, still problems. It's an old valve body. Instead of wasting more time messing around with it, um, I decided to just buy a new valve. So um, I got this valve here um, that I got to hook up. And then hopefully I'll get this thing running because I use this little portable electric power unit for all sorts of stuff like this table here. Um, I use it to lift this uh, lift table up in my shop here. I also am, I uh, use it to run this uh, hydraulic press here too. So you can see it's just got the quick disconnects on it. So I use it, also have it hooked up to another cylinder. I, use, I can use it to like, you know, spread stuff or fix stuff. I can hook it up to any hydraulic cylinder I want. This one I'm actually gonna hook it up to my tube bender, which is over here. Um, I was in the middle of making something for that as well. But yeah, it's a, it's a really handy, handy tool to have, but I'm tired of messing around with this valve. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and change this out. Hopefully that'll be fix the problem. And then I can go ahead and, uh, you know, finish, maybe I'll drill the holes and actually bolt that motor down for real <laughs> and finish this thing up, so. That is the plan. Let's get going. So, box fittings here. Yeah, so this is three quarter inch NTT. not so that means we're gonna have to do a little bit of adapting here so this I believe is a three-quarter inch um, fitting here but it seals into seals into a uh, like a cone seal it would fit on this guy here with that tapered cone that's what would work together on that. But this looks like a straight thread. Yeah, this is a straight thread with just a jam nut and a rubber rubber seal. And then that rubber seal fits into the groove on the back of there. So yeah. We got a couple options here. I can either Try and find the right adapter, or I can cut this off and weld in a different fung. But the tank's full of oil, don't really want to drain it. So what I'm probably gonna have to do is go try and find the fitting for this and get a new one on there. Cause this'll, this thread's on, this is a straight thread. 
but it uh, does not have that ceiling cone on it. So that won't work. But this fits. And I could just take a piece of pipe here, cut this off, and then weld that on. But again, I don't really want to drain the tank. So let me go see if I can find the right fitting, come back, and then we'll take a look at this. All right, guys, so uh, I am going to make a, and I just decided to make an adapter. Um, so I went on to weld on there. So this is the uh, correct thread pitch and everything. This is just a swivel, uh, like straight threaded swivel fitting, but um, I can't use this obviously, but I'm gonna use uh, this thread in here just as a quick reference. So I'm gonna go ahead, I got a chunk of some uh, like waste steel here. I'm gonna go ahead, drill this out and then bore it out to the correct size and then internal thread it uh, to match whatever pitches of these, or is these, are these threads, my gosh. So drill it, bore it, thread it, and then I'll machine a little groove for the O-ring. And then on the other side, I'm either gonna machine a tapered pipe thread. Um, it's kind of a pain to make the taper first and then thread it, or I'm just gonna weld a piece of uh, black pipe that's already threaded, but we'll see. Uh, this is all low pressure, so it's not that big a deal. But all right, let's get started. <laughs> All right, so we are at uh, 945, 945 thousandths. We need to be at 9723. Okay, so we're shooting for nine, 973. I don't know if you can see that, but we're at nine, uh, 973 and a half. So within a half a thou. Or actually, that might even be dead on. So that's good there. I'm gonna go ahead and set up uh, to do the threading. It's a 12 pitch thread. So I'm gonna get everything set up for that and then we'll thread the inside of this guy. All right, so I've gone ahead and done a little scratch pass here. See if I can get this in view. Yep, so we're set up at 12 TPI. On the lathe, uh, it's a matter of just, you know, following the chart, picking the settings, get it all set up right. Now, the scratch pass is good. And uh, take it in a little bit, see uh, how far we can go before it bottoms out. And then I'll set up depth stop. All right, so got the threading done. This thing fits nice, 
nice uh, solid like machinist fit no real wiggle but threads in good that's cool um, now I just gotta come in here and machine a little bit of a lip for the o-ring um, and then flip it around and work on the coupler on the other side all right guys so I got the uh, threads cut out uh, machined a little bit of a lip here for the o-ring to set in and then I just parted it off on the back so um, I was thinking about machining the NPT threads, but since this is just a return line, um, it's not under high pressure. And I have a piece of uh, three quarter inch pipe thread that's already uh, cut off from a piece of pipe. So I'm just gonna go ahead and mill some wrench flats in the side of this. And then I'm gonna weld the uh, piece of NPT pipe to the back because uh, this is just a quick little adapter trying to get this done. So I don't really feel like uh, setting up. I would have had to drill this bar all the way out, machine a taper on the back, and then set up to do the threading for a different thread on that taper as well. And that's a whole lot of extra work for a part that is going to be low pressure and not need to be near this thick anyways. So I'm just going to go ahead, like I said, make some wrench flats, and then I'll weld that adapter on, and then we'll get back to... Uh, putting this hydraulic unit together. So let's fire up the mill. It's a uh, 60 thou off that side. That should be enough to put a wrench flat on. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip this around. Again, none of this is super critical, so. Could indicate all of this in, but I'm gonna put this part on the bottom of this hydraulic unit and Never see it again, so just try and get this done. Touch off again here. So we got some wrench flats. Now let's go ahead and go over to the bench and get that guy welded on. Trying to kind of keep the heat distortion down, so doing some smaller tacks instead of really laying it on. All right, I'm gonna let this guy cool off, clean it up, and then uh, ready to throw that on the hydraulic unit and get the rest of this plumbed up. All right, so we got our fitting done here. We're gonna go ahead and get this O-ring on. Okay, should be a nice good seal there. Now we gotta look at how we wanna mount this valve. So this is where the fluid is gonna be coming out. It'll be on this side. I gotta get some Teflon tape for it too. Probably probably mount the valve like this, then you actuate it over here, and then the two work ports will come off of this side. So let me go and get all this stuff plumbed up and we'll take a look at it. I gotta get a little Teflon tape too. Alright guys, so got everything hooked up. This is our high pressure coming in. Um, off the pump down here. And again, this is just, I got that pump from uh, Northern Tool. Then just got a little motor and a log splitter coupling hookup just to uh, isolate any vibration coming in. A little flexible hose to the bottom of this tank that came out of a dump truck. Got the new valve body hooked up. Our uh, 
part that we machined over there. Holding good, seals good. Again, low pressure, so not super critical. And then I've got just regular uh, half inch disconnects that uh, I have a male and a female on. And then everything in my shop has a male and a female. So this is actually a, this is actually a hydraulic lift table here. I'm working on it right now, but uh, I use the hydraulic unit. It just runs off 110. So I use it to lift the lift table, run external cylinders. I use it to run my hydraulic press and whatever. But uh, let me hook this up real quick. I'll show you guys how it works. And again, this was, um, the only thing I had to buy was just that little pump and then the filter housing. I guess now I had to buy the valve too, but originally I just had this dump truck reservoir laying around and I had that electric motor laying around too. So if you wanna build a little portable hydraulic unit, this is super easy to do. Just get a low displacement pump. Um, I can put the specs in the video if anyone's curious, but um, horsepower determines flow, not pressure. So this is a, I believe it's a half horse motor. And with this half horse motor, I can still, you know, make 2,500 PSI and, you know, run whatever shop implement I need to. So it still works great, um, even though I'm only using a half horsepower motor running on 110. But uh, this, the uh, flow rate is not huge. That's the only thing you sacrifice. If you want a high flow rate, you gotta have high horsepower. But I'll go ahead and plug this in. Cylinder's moving. So again, low displacement pump, so it moves pretty slow, but for the machinery I have in here, it's uh, a little bit slower, it's actually better. So, and this cylinder here, I'm gonna end up hooking up to my tube bender. Uh, that'll probably be in an upcoming video at some point. And then it retracts, retracts a little bit faster because it has less uh, fluid volume because the, the uh, shaft actually takes up a fair amount of volume. But yeah, works good. Super handy little thing to have in the shop, that's for sure.